Hi there and welcome to another episode of Up Close and Personal on Cool 97 FM and Cool 97 TV. I'm your host Yashika Graham and you know this is the place where you get to know your cool personalities a little bit more. This time around we have a very special guest, you know what? It is DJ Edson. He is someone who wears many hats here at Cool 97 FM from technical producer to disc jock to so many more. Hi DJ Edson, welcome to Up Close and Personal. Hi, good afternoon. How you doing? I'm good. Okay. Kind of nervous, but yeah. It's all right, just relax. Relax. You're at home. You are at home. All right, so, so we're going to jump right into it. How did you get involved with music? Where did that interest come from? Wow. Um, started with my father watching my father play music on vinyl every Sunday, wearing underpants <laughs> only. Underpants, underpants only? Underpants only. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And where was that? Hopewell, Hanover. Hopewell. Oh, yeah. That's country where I'm from. Man. Country. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, you're a DJ now, but you started testing out DJing very early on, didn't you? Yeah. Um, clashing with my friend, Xavier. Um, on cassette decks i would have my own deck mm -hmm. he would ha he would have his own deck and we will clash using cassettes yeah okay um we would gather our materials from recordings recording songs on the radio oh wow and pause just before the commercial start that's so like holy power yeah man so you knew you were kind of getting into the vibe of what it would take to be a DJ without without really knowing. knowing what a DJ thing okay. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So before we get to present day DJing, mm -hmm. how did you get started in media in the first place? What got you there? I was attending Edna Manley College, also working part time at music school. And my friend at the time, Arnold Rutherburn, wanted a technical operator for his show, his new show on a radio station back then. Um, I followed him and they needed or he needed a technical operator and I was selected like me, 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 me. And I just had to learn it in half an hour. Wow. Yeah. Couple and that, mistakes. And you've well, been in media since then? Since then. Just transformed your life in one evening? One evening. Oh my goodness. So let's talk about some of your work at Cool 97 FM. So you're a, you're a technical producer here as well. Yeah. What does that job involve? Um, from, well, I don't write scripts, but recording, say, a script. You, for example, recording a, a, a script. Um, so that's raw audio and taking that from raw audio to completion we are at music effects and I think my best product thus far is Reggae Nights promo. Um, each time I listen to that promo it brings tears to my eyes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay so, so since you're saying that I'm curious about what it takes for you to determine when a project is complete. What is it? Is it technical requirements? Is it the emotional effect? What makes you say, okay, this is finished now? It's a little of both. Um, listening to Reggae Night, um, you, you, you keep adding elements to it and you realize, hmm, no, it needs something else or maybe that's too much and you get this feeling like a gut feeling mm -hmm. and that determines its completion there are times that you record record a voice and all it requires is reverb that's it no music and that works too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So does, so does your work as a technical producer play into your work as a DJ? How yes. does that inform, or do they both inform each other? Yes. Um, I've been on uh, setups where a DJ does not know how to at least connect speakers um, to his set. And with my technical background, uh, I can basically run the entire show myself. Mm -hmm. Not bragging still, but yeah, um, I like being a technical person, I like being able to work behind the scenes. I mean, being a DJ is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, 
it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. um, seeing a crowd dancing to your set and enjoying themselves is fulfilling. Yeah. So what goes into that work? Because as, as an audience member, when you go into a party, you're thinking about what you're wearing, how you're going to get there, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But the DJ has a different kind of preparation to make. What does that involve? Um, ensuring you play the hits. Ensuring you play what you think the person will remember. Carrying them through memory lane. Um, watching them dance. Mm -hmm. Watching them react to a song you drop. Um, hearing them scream, women scream, you know, manabosa blank, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. It's amazing. Okay, well, we're going to draw you out to see if you can make me dance in a little bit. Okay. Uh, but hold on. Mm -hmm. So, what I do want to ask you is, you mentioned Edna Manley mm. before. So, I'm asking <laughs> now, why were you at Edna Manley? Tell us about that. Ooh, wow, many moons ago, I went there to study jewelry. Jewelry? Jewelry, yeah. So I um, made jewelry, worked at a few jewelry stores back in the day, and also before jewelry, I was a stained glass artist. Wow. So church stained glass? Church stained glass, one? yes. And you, how did you get into that? Ah, that you, when you went to high school back in my day, you were required to to go on work experience. Mm -hmm. And I was sent to uh, an establishment, um, no longer exists. Um, they make, it's a factory and they make stained glass lamps. And Mr. Taylor, Junior Taylor was my first boss. He's a friend of cool. And from then on, I fell in love. I was a glass cut I started out as a glass cutter. Oh my goodness. Yes. This listen, when you're listening to up close and personal, you know, you got to be prepared to discover things that you thought could not be possible. All right? You never know what our cool personalities have been up to. They're magicians, I tell you. Okay, you hear them, but they're doing so much more. Thank you so much, DJ Edson. No you problem. know what I want to ask you right now? You've had uh, a layered experience mm -hmm. in life. You've been in art, you've been in music, you've been in all of these areas. How important were mentors in your journey? Hmm. Wow. Um, I would say they grew me. Um, they kept me grounded, so to speak. Um, I must thank, if, I, if I'm allowed to mention a few, Mr. Tomlin Ellis, um, he taught me radio, so to speak. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Brown, Claudette Brown and Junior Brown, um, they taught me to be humble. They were one of the few places I worked as a jeweler in Montego Bay. Um, Bonnie Goodison, he was my the first person who taught me how to play vinyl. Mm. Yes, I was his technical operator. Breakfast Club, the early morning show on the radio, Beverly Manley and Anthony, Tony, Tony Abrams, I think that's his name, Tony Abrams, the late Tony Abrams, um, our beloved Prime Minister. I was his technical operator and Tufton, Minister Tufton, I was also his technical operator. Um, wow, <laughs> too much. It, it sounds it's, it's, like it's, a layered it's a lot. It's a lot. deep experience that it's you've had. Lot. What I'm, I'm curious about as well is how your life has changed since being at Cool 97 FM. How has that impacted your journey? Wow. Um, <laughs> I got my first gig because of Cool 97 FM. I played for... Sophia's place in Portmore, Helsha Portmore. I saw my picture on a f on a flyer. Um, it made me cry a little bit. Oh my goodness! A, li a little and bit. Your name on it and everything. I'm a name spell what? right E D S O N. <laughs> yeah, D J Edson. Wow. Um, when I played at that event and I saw persons come out to see me, mm -hmm. or I play a jingle, my jingle allow myself to introduce myself and I heard women screaming that screaming screaming <laughs> yeah screaming 
Um, I remember I went to a supermarket and I heard my name from afar and a lady ran up to me, mm -hmm. lift me off the ground wow. to say she's a number one fan. Mm -hmm. um, I felt kind of weird because a female lifting me off the ground. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I talk knee high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is the, the, the level of impact. <laughs> yeah. So Cool 97 FM allowing you to connect with people with and people. music allowing you to connect with people as yeah. well. Um, where do we go now, DJ Ed? So what are you working on? You know, you just started a show on a Saturday night. Tell us yeah. about that and it's, any other projects you're working it's on. It's called the Twin Spin mm -hmm. um, with myself and Clive Badu. I'm the older twin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you tell people. It's the... Twin Spin on Saturdays, 9 to midnight. Mm -hmm. um, Non-stop party music between 8, well, 9 and midnight. 8 is up to mid-2000. Mm -hmm. um, there's another show that I'm currently working on called The Woman's Touch. I'm the technical person behind it, so okay. it's both audio and video. Mm -hmm. um, it's stressful at times, but I enjoy it. Yeah. It keeps me, I'm learning every day, mm -hmm. every day. Keeps you on your toes. On my toes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, wow, okay. Well, Edson, you know what? Thank you so very much for talking to me today. I'm so glad that you mentioned party music because wow. that is where we're gonna go now. I'm gonna ask you to step on over to the console and get into the music, but first, just thank you so very much for get, getting us into your journey and what a layered journey it has been. We do want to thank you, our listeners, our viewers, for tuning in for another episode of Up Close and Personal right here on Cool 97 FM and Cool 97 TV. This has been Quite the journey. DJ Edson has Thank been you. my guest. I'm Yashika Graham. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Stay tuned for the dancing because that's where we're going to go now with DJ Edson. Allow myself to introduce myself. My name is... DJ Edson. Yeah, blessings we are reap and we course in handful. Oh, we no rise and boast. Yeah, we give thanks and we need it the most. We have to give thanks and we really supposed to be thankful. Bossy, bossy, Godfather, man a OG, man a half humble, man a bossy. Fling a rag a rhythm like it's all free. Are you ready for 